Welcome to the Bentley Systems training course where you will learn how to design post tension, concrete slabs, and RAM concept using a generated tendon workflow. The first thing we're going to do is to access our tendon parameters layers. We're going to go to our layers menu bar item, select latitude pre-stressing, and then we're going to go to the latitude tendon parameters standard plan. Now the tendon parameters layer contains high level objects that are defined and used for the generation of individual tendons. This layer will facilitate a production quality presentation of high level tendon layout information. Now within this plan, you're gonna find many layer specific tools that will help you in drawing your high level tendon objects. The first one is abandoned tendon polyline. This is a polyline representing a specification for the generation of a group of tendons at a fixed spacing and parallel to the polyline segments. We also have a distributed tendon quadrilateral or a quadrilateral representing a specification for generation of an array of tendons at a specified angle within the shape. And we also have a tendon void tool. This will be a polygon shape that represents an area where no tendons are to be generated. Typical usage might be for stressing blockouts or small slab areas that are too short for tendons to get stressed. Now in this particular sample model, we're going to be using all of these tools to model our distributed and also our banded tendons. On the latitude layer, we're gonna to choose to lay out our distributed tendons on this plan, and we're gonna reserve our banded tendons for later on when we lay out our longitudinal direction. The first step, whenever you're modeling any type of object within RAM concept, is to first specify the properties by double-clicking on the command. If I go over to the layer-specific toolbar, I'm gonna to find the distributed tendon quadrilateral tool, which will be used to model distributed tendons and I'm gonna double click on it so I can define my default tendon properties. The first thing I'm gonna enter is my default tendon orientation angle, which we'll leave at zero degrees for this model. Next, we're gonna find our tendon specification type, and we are allowed to enter an effective force or a number of strands. If we selected an effective force for distributed tendon quadrilaterals, this would represent the effective force per unit width of the slab to generate in the distributed tendon array. If we selected the number of strands for distributed tendon quadrilaterals, this would represent the number of strands per unit width of slab to generate in the distributed tendon array. For this model, we're gonna go ahead and select strands and we're gonna enter one strand per foot. We can also enter a tendon spacing, which we'll leave at three feet and a PT system, which we'll select as half inch unbonded. For more information about the PT systems available within RAM Concept, you can go ahead and take a look at your materials criteria through the criteria menu bar item. Now the last piece of information we need is the inflection point ratio. Now the inflection point ratio is the ratio of the distance x to the distance from end 1 to the point where the tendon curvature changes sign to the distance from end 1 to end 2. A commonly used value is 0.2, which places the inflection point 10% of the span distance from end one if end two is at mid-span. We'll go ahead and keep the inflection point ratio at 0.2. The last piece of information we must enter is for the HARP checkbox. This will specify the tendon segment as having a straight profile as opposed to a parabolic profile. Once you are done specifying all of your default distributed tendon properties, you're gonna go ahead and click OK. And at this point, you're ready to go ahead and just start modeling your tendons. We're gonna notice that once we click OK, our tendon tool is still active, which means we can just start modeling. Now this tool does require four clicks for you to create basically a quadrilateral on your plan for where your tendons are gonna be located. You may want to turn on one of your snap tools in order to snap to the appropriate slab edges or grid locations if applicable. For this particular model, I'm gonna model three different quadrilaterals, one between grid lines E and D, one between C and D, and one between A and B. I am gonna go ahead and click on the edges of slab to get the tendons to go all the way out to the edge. Now, if you do accidentally hit the wrong location, 
on your plan, you can go ahead and right click and say cancel all or cancel your last point without having to start over. There's my first tendon quadrilateral. And then I'm going to keep this process going until I'm done. Now as we review our distributed tendon parameters, we're going to notice that on this particular plan we have located a pore strip between grid lines 5 and 6 represented by these two grid lines. Now shrinkage creep and pre-compression due to post-tensioning cause axial deformations. Pore strips will allow portions of the structure to undergo partial or smaller deformations, thus reducing the restraining forces. Pore strips are also used as stressing access in cases where the slab is located adjacent to an existing building structure. Now for our particular model, we're going to assume that no pre-stressing can go within the pore strip location. And to ensure that, we can use our tendon void icon. A tendon void will ensure that tendons are stopped at this location. Now the tendon void command does not have any additional parameters associated with it, so we just need to go over to our layer specific tool and do a single click on the tendon void icon, and then we can create our tendon void by basically drawing a rectangle around the area that we want to be a voided area. After you're done creating your distributed tendon polylines in your latitude direction, you're now ready to proceed to your longitude direction to model your banded polylines. Here we're going to select our layers menu and we're going to select longitude pre-stressing and again we're going to be working primarily in the longitude tendon parameters standard plan. Now our first step for modeling tendons is to double click on the tool you're going to be using. We're going to be working on banded tendons for the longitude direction so we're going to double click on the banded tendon polyline tool and specify the default properties. For this model, we're going to enter a number of 10 strands per each banded polyline. After you enter all of the information for your default banded tendon polyline, you're going to go ahead and click OK. And you can see that the icon is still selected, so we're ready to go ahead and just start modeling our banded polylines. We're going to start at the edge of slab adjacent to grid line E1 and then we're going to click until we get to the end. Once you've created your first line you're going to right click and click enter to complete that process and you're going to want to keep doing this for the remainder of your plan. So here you can see my tool is still selected and here I'm going to go from grid lines 3 along grid line 3 and then we'll go along grid lines 4 and we're going to keep this process up for each of our column lines in this model. Now for banded tendon polylines, the tendons can be defined as either primary or added tendons. In RAM concept, the number of strands along a continuous tendon cannot change. If you would like to intentionally change the number of strands between one span and an adjacent span, you're going to want to model your continuous tendons as primary tendons. The discontinuous tendons will then be defined as added tendons. The segment banded tendon, tendon polyline tool can be used to segment previously created band and tendon polylines where they cross the defined segmentation line. So what you may have noticed when we created the tendon polylines along grid lines 4, 5, and 6 is that we created these as primary tendons. Now if we want to vary the number of strands along these grid lines, we're going to need to cut these tendon polylines which we can do through our split banded tended polyline tool. So what we're going to do is click on this tool and then we can draw a line from grid lines B4 to B6. And what you can see here now 
is that those lines have been split. Now we can vary the number of strands along this line, this line, and this line. So we can select maybe one side or the other. So say for example, we want to create a different number of strands along grid lines four, five, and six. We're going to highlight those, right click and say selection properties, and then we can change the number of strands, say to 12 over there. So now we have 12 strands here and then 10 strands over here. Now automatically when we generate the tendon plan, RAM concept will create an added tendon line to split off of two tendons because again we have to maintain continuous lines. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.